over the last two weeks, between sort of the QA chapter, we've been fairly busy um, trying to improve coverage over over the test automation to not just test uh, outputs of the engine, but to also test reports uh, in in different ways, really. So checking that text is included or absent from the report, uh, and also checking differences in the report. So things that we didn't actually catch within the test scope that we can also um, sort of show and bring up. So um, the first thing I'm going to show here is Harpreet's done some work with the with the Lisa changes. So now within the pension with an API test, it now checks for um, certain things in the reports or if certain things are not in the report. So for example, here we have an assertion making sure that uh, that's not included in the report. Um, over here we've got uh, no, it's this one. This one here we've actually got uh, the Lisa changes, making sure that the old stuff that was there is not not there anymore, and the new stuff is added in. Um, so what what we can do now is sort of add assertions in and make sure that the reports are the report changes we're making <coughs> are actually included, or the stuff we're taking out of the reports is actually removed. And I um, just want to sort of go on to straight into the the diffs. So if we if we don't catch anything in the assertion, so for example, there's sort of a blanket change across more than one test, or every report's changed, or it's got a very particular um, criteria, we diff the reports from a certain date. At the moment, it's from yesterday. So what I've done is changed yesterday's report, and then this diff has found that there's loads of loads of differences. Um, this is diffing sentences, so the whole sentence, even if only one word changed in the sentence, the whole sentence says it's changed, to try and give a little bit of context. But then I, I thought this wasn't sort of enough, because you, you don't really have enough context, like what does this number mean here, or, and, and things like that. So what, what we've done is created the same HTML report, but with the diffs highlighted of what's been removed, what's been added. Um, so green's added from last time and reds removed from last time and then you'll get like a red and a green matched together on this report I'll show you this, the other one so in in this report here we have an example of like a compliance letter where you've you've got very minor changes so say tax tax changes so what we're able to do now is um, when the, when the tests run, we can see if there's any report changes. If there are report changes, then what we can do is check them. If they're correct, then we add assertions. And then the next day's diff will just all, won't find it because it's obviously not changed from yesterday. And then we've got that quality assurance going forward that that was the right change or that was the wrong change. So we can sort of start catching things earlier. Um, and the idea is that when we do a release um, of the engines, then we'll set that date so we can say as of last week nothing's changed, nothing's changed, nothing changed because that's what sort of we'll be giving as evidence is from the last release to this release this is what changed not from yesterday to today it's too small of a scope um, so yeah that's that's on the report side um, what we've also done now is each night the two Jenkins jobs that run the automations the API tests they now run with all the reports and save them all to S3. So from now on, we have every single day's worth of reports, all 4,000 of them, saved in an archive. So we can say, well, what did the Pension Wizard engine give us three weeks ago? We can go back and find that report. Um, we can also then diff against different periods of time. So we can say over the last three months, what, how has our report, how has our advice changed based on this customer? Um, which might be a good idea to sort of add the... Um, add the people, uh, the personas that we've got, add those as tests so then we can say, as this persona, this person's advice has changed in this way. Um, and then on retirement with it as well, uh, Chris done some great work on automating his live iris tests now. So um, with every release, we normally have to check live iris uh, manually, but Chris has now written the automation so it will check live iris and assert on that itself and provide evidence on that. Um, also, we've started migrating the old retirement wizard end-to-end -end tests across into the new one. So that's now we're going to start getting more coverage on the retirement wizard front end. And on Power Planner, we've um, we've 
added the XML tests in, so what we've done is uh, branched off the automations, the API automations for Retirement Wizard, so we have XML health inputs and the standard um, JSON health inputs now tested, so you know, we can check both ways of the system, and the engine gives the same response out. Um, and the end-to-end -end on Power Plan now actually generates advice, so we can go through and make sure that the advice is okay every, every single day. Um, yeah, and pretty much that's all that we've been doing. Well, that's all that I've, I've sort of shown being involved in. But um, yeah, any questions? Um, I see there's like two types of changes, and there's like changes that are, are errors, and then changes that are based on, let's say, it being a different day or a different figure, let's say, that makes the calculation slightly different. Um, how do you identify which ones are kind of acceptable differences and the things that actually should trigger an error? Or is it a manual process to actually go through and, and eyeball them all? Yeah, the idea is uh, initially that it doesn't fail the test based on a report. It just says it's pending, so it just it comes up with a different status. Uh, um, but what what we'd like to do is do a um, do a, a change log each time we do a release, so we can say this is changed in this way because of this. So then you can give a description of why, and then anything that's not in the change log is an unexpected change, so therefore a failure. Um, yeah, because we don't want things being changed in the report that we don't know why or we don't. No one's agreed why. So yeah, there will be a definite stage in the middle where someone agrees that it's a correct change. But at the moment, no, it doesn't fail the test. It just puts it as pending. Does this get updated then on the test approach document so that when we're talking to new customers, we're explaining how rigorous our testing is around releases, etc.? Because the, the diff thing and everything is really useful. Yeah, so, so the diff thing is kind of new this week. Um, so that document hasn't yet caught up. Yeah. Um, so we're still doing it with you know across you know, on on, El on retirement. We're, we're still doing it using the old tool where you get you get every single change. Yeah. But yes, it will be that will catch up soon. Cool. Any more questions? All good. Perfect. <laughs>